Am I the a-hole stories? First one is titled. Am I the a-hole for refusing to help my mom financially because she paid for all my younger siblings stuff but not mine? I'm 26 female. I have 7 siblings. Ages 23 male, 21 male, 17 female, 13 female, 13 female, 9 female, 9 male. All of us, minus the twins, have different dads and she has never had a stable boyfriend. Now, being the oldest, a lot of the mother responsibilities were passed off onto me. I babysat all of the kids until I moved out at 16 and my, now 17, sister even called me mom until she was 6. I taught my four youngest siblings how to walk. Taught all of them to ride a bike. Homeschooled my youngest sibling because he has learning disabilities. I also had all cooking and cleaning responsibilities, and was forced into a night job at age 15, to help her support the household, as well as being a full-time student and caregiver when at home. When I moved out at 16 my grandmother moved in as my replacement. I never held this against my mom, even though it was her decision to have so many kids and force me into a mother role. However, I became extremely resentful of the fact that she bought my 23-year-old, 21-year-old and 17-year-old siblings, all cars. They were second-hand, yes, but she never even offered to help me pay for a car, let alone buy me one. She also paid for at least half of their college tuition. I didn't go to college because, I not only could not afford it, but I also did terrible in school due to working and being exhausted from being a parent to kids that aren't mine. It really messed with my grades, meaning, no scholarship. I'm doing great now. I have a fantastic job, my own house and have bought my car outright. I'm proud of myself. But now that my home and car have proven to my mom that I have money, I never discuss my money with her, she has started asking for handouts. Loans, that I know she will never pay back basically, as she has never paid me back before. Last night she asked for $200. Didn't say why. I told her no and when she asked, I said maybe you should ask your other kids. You know, the ones that you bought cars for and put through college, versus asking the one kid who didn't get jackish, besides a mothering role. She flipped out and said that she never did that and that I was basically being a drama queen and needed to grow up. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your mom's unhappiness that you've figured out she sees you as the family caretaker and have rejected the role, is not your problem. If she asks for money again, tell her to grow up and take responsibility for her own finances, and seriously think about how much contact you want to have with her going forward. I have very limited contact with her now, which is partly why I said no as well. She never calls me and barely answers when I reach out to her either. What your mom did is called parentification, and is a form of abuse. She forced you into the role of parent. Not the a-hole. She already got her money's worth out of you when she took away your childhood. I would have said sure and given her an envelope of doll hairs. Not the a-hole. Ha huh, grow up? You're more adult than she is. You grew up way too fast, and had to be a mother so young to your siblings. Your mom is upset because she wants to use you as an interest-free ATM, and still sees you as the family caretaker. They are not your responsibility. Be happy, live your life the way you want to, and let your other siblings step up for once. This is what I wanted to say. The absolute nerve of this woman to tell you to grow up. Tell her to lose your number until she gets her crap together and takes responsibility for her life choices. In no way are you an a-hole here. Not the a-hole times 100. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my brother that I can't move out because he financially destroyed me? I work just a bit over minimum wage so I don't have much money saved. I had a very small property in Mexico where my father lives and I sold it and gave some to him, since he was struggling at the time. With around $4,000 in the bank I regretted letting my mom find out, because even though I love her, she tends to overspend and get into debt fast. I wanted to do many things with this money either travel or go back to school, but I was pressured by my mom to not spend it and just use it when I needed it. I did spend some money on takeout and stuff I liked, but most of it was spent by my mom and brother who is now a teenager. I never really had a reason to keep tabs on my account which was stupid of me, because my dreams came crashing down when I tried to take out $100 and was declined. I checked my account and I only had $30 inside, and I panic. I check the history and I find out my brother spent over $600 in 5 days on Xbox cards. I cried so much, and I was held back by my mom and stepdad to not beat my brother and destroy his Xbox. In that moment, I wanted to take some luggage, leave and never come back, 
but the guilt of leaving them when my stepdad who is sick and weak needed financial help to keep up his medical bills, so I stayed and I have held this grudge for the past two years. Recently my brother has been looking for jobs since he became 16 recently, and before he even started, he has been looking for a car already. I never paid attention because I thought it was just hot air blowing out of his butt, but he told me that him and my mom saw a car and they are going to get it in a week. I got silent and asked how much and he said 7000, and I said, I like that you are having high hopes for finding a job, but you shouldn't spend mom's money if you can't pay for it. He responded that she was only going to pay for the down payment and he would do the rest, but I retorted, you know the moment that you can't pay it, they will take it back? I won't allow you to keep taking her money just because you think you'll find a job immediately. The next thing he said made my blood boil. Why do you care? It's not your money and it's only 7000 that's not a lot of money. I went cold, I once had $4,000 in my bank. You and mom spent it on things without my permission. You stole $600 in 5 days and I don't know how much you stole before that. I wanted to go on vacation or go back to school, but what I should have done was get an apartment and leave you all. I have lost so much because of you all and I still stay only because I care about you, but I can't live my life like this. I left to get some sun and now I am here. I know some would say that I should have left a long time ago, but I make more than half the salary between my family and they needed my financial help for years. Am I the a-hole for telling my brother I want to move out, but I financially can't because of them? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole, but please, get your own account that no one can access. I honestly think this is partially your fault for being a pushover and allowing access, when you knew there were spending problems. You are right. I am a pushover, but sometimes they need medicine for my dad or repairs to the house and vehicles. My mom is the only other person in my family that earns money, and she get minimum wage. When something expensive is needed they promise to pay me back, but it takes a long time for them to pay. I'd still get that account and if they need money for emergency purposes, you can pay the bill directly. They don't need unrestricted access to your account. Not the a-hole. If your mother can afford to help your brother get a $7,000 car, she can afford to manage without you. Start your life. Also, she can afford to pay you back for the money she stole. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. But how are you able to acknowledge their bad decisions and not your own? You are an adult. You are making the decision to stay, that's not on them. And for some reason, even after having money stolen from you, you are making the conscious choice to do nothing and have a bank account that is shared. Get your own bank account. I do have my own bank account, but I'm going to be honest, I gave the password to my parents. I haven't told them this, but I gave it to them because I fear that if I die suddenly, all the money I have would be frozen and I would die without giving the little I have to them. I don't have health insurance, but I do have life insurance just in case, so my death wouldn't send them into debt because of my untimely leave. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for making my son give up the signifiers of wealth at school, design our clothes and sneakers, being driven in nice cars, because he was making fun of kids for being less wealthy than us? I am a mother to a teenage boy. The father is hardly in the picture, he pays child support and that's about it, he is very absent otherwise. Another relevant thing, I'm pretty well off, I work in tech. My son's father is extremely wealthy and the court order for child support is enough to pay for the best for my son. He goes to a fairly competitive private school, is in a lot of extracurriculars that cost a decent bit, etc. I found out from school administration just this month, that my son had been bullying several students for being less wealthy, for being dropped off at school in a budget sedan, for having name brands clothes that are not as expensive as other name brands. I was appalled by his behaviors. I had a talk with him about how this was wrong, and also about how it's not something that he should have any personal pride in. He has no job. No savings, no investments, no wealth of his own. By totally random chance, he happened to be born into good circumstances, and that's it. The school admin and I arranged an apology between him and all the kids he was bullying. I also decided that this year, we're thrift shopping for clothes. No more brand name sneakers or clothes. And rather than driving him to school and activities in the Porsche or the Jaguar, I'm driving him everywhere in my 92 Jeep that was one of my first cars, that I mostly keep around for nostalgia and off-roading. It's really beaten up, I've rolled it, taken off the doors, tried to fix the paint with rattle cans at one point lol, young and dumb at that point. And for any activities he joins, he can borrow club equipment instead of getting his own bought. 
He was really upset about it all, especially being driven to school and activities in the Jeep. He said that it was causing problems with his friends, he was looking bad at school, his friend's parents didn't want their kids getting in such an old vehicle with no doors. He also said that it was embarrassing him for me to pretend he's poor. His dad, who overall has been very absent, got upset with me because apparently, word had gotten around his circles that his son was being driven around town in a junker, and that I was making him use the club gear for sports instead of his own. And that was not a fair punishment because impressions matter, and it will affect the rest of his life. Am I the a-hole for having this approach to parenting my son, who was bullying kids for being poor? I don't buy him new designer things or drive him places in luxury cars anymore, we shop at thrift stores, and if I am taking him to school, I drive a car from 92. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. 1. You are teaching him a valuable lesson for the rest of his life. 2. It's never okay to make fun of someone based on their family's level of income. In summary, this is a great punishment that might help him see things from other people's point of view. This. A thousand times this. Also, thank you. I wish there were more parents like you. You could bring it up one step to the Target boutique where I used to buy my own cheap clothes in high school. But how about buying second-hand equipment for club sports, rather than using the club stuff? Club stuff is there if you can't afford to buy, if some kid in my school had been punished like this, I wouldn't have been able to get a helmet or stick for hockey equivalent. Don't punish the poor kids too, OP. I donated his own gear, all with duplicates, to the club so for each sport, say fencing, the club has like three more weapons, two more full outfits, etc. There just is now the experience of having to wear a gear other people have shared, have to be seen not showing up with your own top of the line kit, etc. I also chatted with the coaches, and currently in his sports, all the kids who participate bring their own stuff. The loaner equipment usually goes out to kids who are trying out the sport and deciding if they like it, but just due to the level of wealth of these other kids' parents, they never stay using club gear for long. Also, a little bit of a tangent, but this has opened my eyes to how horrible a job my son's school does with providing financial assistance to anyone who can't pay in full. He literally sees a brand new Ford sedan as poor because that's the least expensive thing that any kid he knows gets dropped off in. None of his peers have to borrow club gear, etc. I'm thinking of talking to the school admin about what, if anything, they're doing in terms of making this education more accessible, because it sure seems like nothing at all. Not the a-hole. The entire year may be a little harsh, but you know what else is harsh? Bullying. Your son was displaying awful behavior and you were counteracting it with a very relevant punishment. And if his friends are excluding him because of his perceived wealth, they aren't really his friends. To be honest, an entire year doesn't sound too bad for what he did, I mean the kids he bullied are not as well off and can't just do it like that for one year, they are living it. Dude at my school did something similar, his parents sold his electronics and he had to get a job at McDonald's, could have done anything else, and work three years for his stuff because they refused to buy him anything but necessities. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.